This is a Tibet House member video and is a part of the Force for Good class series, now available at tibethouse.us. So what I wanted to start with, in, in that first class, uh, Introduction to World Religions class that I took, the Buddhist text that we read was called the Dhammapada, which is a collection of Buddhist verse that was meant for householders, not for monks. So it's in kind of simple language, um, not English, of course, but a simple Pali or Sanskrit language now translated. Uh, it's in simple language meant for lay people. It's not in the, um, uh, the kind of terminology that the monks uh, would have had to learn. But it really, it, in particular, this verse that I want to read to you, which is entitled Mind, uh, really spoke to me right away. And it has kind of the essence, I think, in this verse. It has the essence of the sutra that we're going to talk about a little bit, the, the, uh, the satipatthana or the, um, uh, the foundations of mindfulness. So you can sort of hear in this verse from the Dhammapada everything that's to come in the uh, sutra about mindfulness. So it's called Mind. Like an archer and arrow, the wise man steadies his trembling mind, a fickle and restless weapon. So that right away, you know, the, the mind as a fickle and restless weapon was something that made sense to me. But I like it in a Buddhist verse talking about a weapon. Flapping like a fish thrown on dry ground, it trembles all day struggling to escape from the snares of Mara the tempter. Mara the tempter is like a mythological figure in the, um, uh, in the Buddha's life who represents his ego, basically. Um, so he's, in, as the Buddha is struggling towards his enlightenment, he has to confront all of his baser tendencies, what from the psychoanalytic side we would call his, his drives, you know. Uh, so Mara represents that, plus his pride and his narcissism, and he's in a constant struggle with Mara. So uh, his mind, flapping like a fish thrown on dry ground, it trembles all day, struggling to escape from the snares of Mara the tempter. The mind is restless, to control it is good, a disciplined mind is the road to nirvana. So mindfulness, which is what the sutra is all about, is basically the technique of controlling, not over-controlling like we might think, but of, of disciplining, of bringing, of turning the mind from, you know, an out of control, trembling, restless, uh, struggling thing to a weapon, or, you know, that might be too harsh a metaphor actually for where we're, where I'd like to take it, but the idea that the mind can be disciplined and that there are resources in the mind that can be made more accessible to us through the application of a meditative practice. That's what this is trying to talk about. Look to your mind, wise man. Look to it well. It is subtle, invisible, treacherous. A disciplined mind is the road to nirvana. So subtle, invisible, treacherous. Swift, single, nebulous, it sits in the cave of the heart. Who conquers it frees himself from slavery. No point calling him wise, whose mind is unsteady, who is not serene, who does not know the Dharma. Call him wise, whose mind is calm, whose senses are controlled, who is unaffected by good and evil, who is wakeful. He knows the body for what it is, a frail jar. He makes his mind firm like a fortress. He attacks Mara with the weapon of wisdom. He guards what he conquers jealously. I like that too, that there's jealousy in the, um, in a, in the Buddhist verse. So we don't have to like get rid of all of our stuff. We just have to learn how to make it work for us, actually, instead of against us. It's not long before the body, bereft of breath and feeling, 
lies on the ground, poor thing, like a burnt out cinder. No hate can hurt, no foe can harm, as hurts and harms a mind ill-disciplined. Neither father, mother, nor relative can help, as helps a mind that is well-disciplined. So, satipatthana, sati, the word for mindfulness is sati. So, sati means memory, which is a little weird, like why does the word, so the, there was no word mindfulness, okay? Mindfulness was like first used in the 1880s by some early British translator of Sanskrit or Pali texts. And, the, and he was looking around for like what kind of word could best describe what this, what this sutra is about. And he came up with this word mindfulness, which now you know, has taken on a whole, a, a whole set of meanings. Um, but it, the literal word sati means memory. So why? What kind of memory? What, it, what, what's, what, that's a question that I've always had. Is it memory, like psychoanalytic memory, like we're supposed to remember? What are we remembering? You know, did the Buddha have to remember something? And he did. Thanks for watching, and please be sure to like and subscribe to support the ongoing work of Tibet House US. Tashi Delek.